Good morning. It's good to see everyone today. Well, I wish I could see you. You can see me. I don't know if that's a good thing for you or not, but we're thankful to be with you again today for our Sunday morning message. God is so good to us. He is He's just a wonderful Savior and someone we can go to with every problem in life. And I thank God this morning for his goodness, his provisions for all of us. And thank the Lord for Lewis Fort Baptist Church. We love you. We miss you. Uh, maybe soon uh, we pray that we'll be able to have church again. Maybe a few more weeks. We just don't know. Uh, but thank you for the support of the church and all that you're doing. Praying for me, I know. I can tell that. And we appreciate that as we pray for all of you. God bless each of you this morning. Um, the sermon today is uh, a little bit different. I, I really uh, think it's something that needs to be talked about from time to time. Uh, so we'll just get started, and you can uh, you can get a hold of it here as we go. Uh, I was listening uh, one time to a guy tell a story, uh, and when I heard it, I, I laughed a little bit because really it reminded me of myself so much. Uh, a while back, a man and his wife uh, had a little free time to, to take a little drive over into the country, as many of us uh, like to do. They decided to drive up into the mountains for the afternoon and have a picnic uh, there. And uh, he was driving along, really relaxed, enjoying uh, the cool air. And all of a sudden, from the passenger side of the car, his wife shouts, Oh, no! All of a sudden, he's fighting the wheel, trying to, to keep it between the, the lines. And um, he turns it this way, he turns it that way trying to get control and then he's breathing hard and finally comes to a to a halt there and uh, he looks at his wife and and almost screams what she said I forgot my sunglasses don't you think they were both overreacting a little bit certainly they were but I have seen ourselves, Susie and me, in similar situations. When our girls were growing up, I'll give you a little personal note here. Uh, I was the most calm, collected dad you could ever know. No, I wasn't. Not at all. When I thought the girls were doing something uh, they weren't supposed to be doing before I got the facts, Many times I would overreact. If I thought if I thought they wanted to do something that might hurt them, that seemed dangerous to me, I'm sure I overreacted. When they didn't come home with the grades and the achievements at school, uh, I thought they ought to be uh, having. I probably overreacted sometimes. When they started to drive, though, I didn't overreact. I, I had conniptions. <laughs> and when they started bringing boys home, uh, those uh, young men that I knew one of these days the right one would come along and take them away, I'm sure that I overreacted as well. Overreaction. That's what we want to talk about today. Certainly, I'm not taking anything away from the seriousness of this pandemic that we're in. It's very, very serious. Uh, some may say that we've overreacted, that our governments of the world have overreacted by doing the social distancing and things like that. Well, I really don't think so because what else could they do to try to slow it down? I totally agree with what our president, our governors tried to do. Uh, I think we must be careful uh, as we see it attacking our elderly people and certainly others. Uh, none of us are exempt, but certainly we uh, have seen some cases of probably things that were overreacting, case in point. I believe if people would have just stayed as calm as possible when it began, 
this is just one example. Our grocery stores wouldn't be empty of things that we need daily if we'd have just kept going and getting the things that we needed weekly or bi-weekly or whatever. Uh, it would have probably been okay. But there was a lot of overreaction. People buying up every, every paper product and everything else that they could and taking it home and putting it up. And another thought came to mind when I, I, I see those things about overreaction. Uh, the Lord said to love him with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second commandment that goes along with that is like unto it, he said, and that is to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. I wonder how many people that, uh, you know, bought so many of the things were really thinking of their neighbor at that time. I wonder if we got back to the things of God, if we wouldn't all be better off. But back to a few personal notes on the overreacting. God has it under control always. He had it under control in my life when I was younger, raising children and trying to build a house and all of those things, he had it under control. After years of overreacting, uh, I've learned that he does. He does have it under control, and he's taught me uh, to face situations with that in mind that he does, in fact, uh, move the universe and all of the things that go on in it. We need to remember that, don't we? The many circumstances that I overreacted in worked out just fine and even the boys coming to to date the girls and ultimately getting married and and now look at the blessings that i have that i could have altered by overreacting look at the blessings that i have with five precious grandchildren two precious son-in-laws and a wonderful family there are prices to pay for overreacting the downside of overreacting is actually the title of what we want to talk about today. And I want us to turn to Matthew chapter 13. And we're going to look at verses 24 through 30. But we're going to concentrate on 29 and 30. So let's turn with our, in our Bibles there. Uh, this is a parable of the Lord uh, teaching us uh, really uh, about overreacting. And then we'll make a comment or two along as we go. Another parable put he unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field from whence then hath it tares he said unto them an enemy has done this the servant said unto him wilt thou then that we go and gather them up but he said nay lest while ye gather up the tares ye root up also the wheat with them what's he saying don't overreact It'll all work out. Verse 30. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this wonderful, beautiful day. Thank you for the word of God. Lord, overreacting many times has a price to pay. Lord, help us to always understand you're in control of situations. Help us, Lord, by being in our midst by your power through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Overreacting almost always brings negatives to it. I've seen that in my own life, so I can preach it truthfully. Today I'd like for us to look at three uh, of the damaging results that overreacting can bring. The first negative result of overreacting is that it can cause us to lose our temper. Oh, preacher, don't preach on that today, but it can. Getting hot under the collar, so to speak, or blowing our stack always brings about negative results. Always and almost always leads a person to commit sin. So we must be careful. Proverbs 19.11 tells us the discretion or wisdom 
of a man deferred or that puts off his anger, and it is his glory to pass over a transgression. Let me ask you, did our Lord teach this and live by this example to us when he was upon this earth? Well, certainly he did. Jesus' teachings in Matthew chapter 5, for example, verses 43 and 44 say this, Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Drivers, think about the road that we're on. Drivers are some of the worst people to overreact with anger that there are. You've probably seen it or maybe have overreacted to some situation. Somebody cuts them off and then it's on. The driver starts to tailgate, blow his horn, curse and use all kinds of gestures or worse. And all of this because of some minor offense uh, that he should have let go. But no, they don't let it go, do they? Some people have the mindset of getting angry and getting even. Therefore, many drivers end up with road rage that sometimes even turns into physical altercation or worse. Obviously, these people aren't Holy Spirit-filled, are they? Remember Jesus' teachings and the verses we read a few minutes ago. Have you ever overreacted in anger? Not asking you to answer verbally, but you can certainly answer to yourself. You were doing pretty well through some kind of very trying situation. And then somebody said something or did something that added a straw that broke the camel's back and, and maybe you exploded. Remember 1 Samuel 25, when David and his army were running from Saul in the desert, David sent some of his men to request food from a rich man in the area. You recall the story. The rich man refused and David went ballistic, remember? He sent 400 armed soldiers to kill Nabal, the rich man, and his shepherds. Now that was overreacting, was it not? Thankfully, Nabal's wife, Abigail, stepped in and headed off that massacre. At times, all of us, find ourselves on the emotional edge. It's certainly no different right now with everything that's going on. Our lives have been changed. Let's be sure not to overreact in anger. We cannot escape stress in our lives. We cannot escape being tired. We cannot escape disappointments. These all are tough things to go through, but even in these situations, Overreaction can cause a lot of damage in our lives and in our relationship with other people. Which brings us to the second negative of overreacting. And that is we could lose our relationship with a dear friend or even a spouse or a child in overreaction. Many great friendships have been destroyed when one of the friends overreacted to something the other friend said or did. I hope that's not the case in your life. But if it is, we need to understand that overreacting can be very damaging. Likewise, many marriages end up on the rocks or worse because the husband or wife both overreact to some small situation that has the potential of escalating into disaster. A wife and her said to her husband, I wish that we could spend more time together. And then he may impulsively overreact by saying something like this. Here we go again. You're nagging again. That's all I ever hear. I work hard to support this family and, and all I ever get are complaints. That is definitely a negative overreaction, isn't it, men? Certainly it is. Ladies, we can overreact as well, can't you? Before the husband overreacted in that situation, maybe he could have responded by hearing his wife, uh, by not hearing his wife as nagging, but hearing her as loving him and desiring to spend more time with him because of her love for him. Making a marriage work and flourish in the days in which we live takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of trust. 
It takes a lot of listening. It takes a lot of love and positive responding by both the husband and the wife. I fear that through these times of stress and anxiety that that their their kid and and being uh, uh, together a lot in the home, uh, I fear there could be arguments and things over insignificant stuff that could lead to worse problems. Let's be careful and not overreact. Another troublesome thought dealing with overreacting is how many little babies or children might be abused because some parent overreacted by their continual crying or some other bothersome issue, ultimately causing them even maybe to lose the child. That's a serious thing, isn't it? Overreacting can be very serious. And then the third and final negative result of overreacting is that it may help you to cause uh, or cause you to lose your spiritual health. Some people today leave their churches because they became upset about something that seemed significant to them but couldn't get anyone else to see that significance. They might be tempted to get on the phone and try to get people on their side, but that doesn't happen, uh, that, uh, that shouldn't happen to cause them to leave the church angry. Don't let this happen to any of you, ever. I can't tell you how much I've missed you guys and how much we love you all. Uh, churches are just full of people. People make mistakes. People do things to upset us. People say things that they don't even know they've said uh, many times that may offend us. We need to be careful and not overreact. Uh, to those situations. Don't get your feelings hurt because your name was misspelled in the newsletter. Don't let some little happenstance that doesn't matter in eternity to co uh, contribute to your leaving your church family and being productive for the Lord. This is our church family. Lewis Fork uh, is a wonderful church family. Please don't ever lose that or by overreacting to something insignificant. Some people desire in their heart uh, to overreact to some petty circumstance in the church, therefore uprooting the whole congregation, causing the production of spiritual fruit to cease. I've seen it happen in churches. Churches split, and it's a terrible thing. Thank God for our relationships at Lewis Fort Baptist Church. We appreciate it so much talking about uprooted let's go back to the to the text for a moment Matthew 13 29 but he said nay lest while ye gather up the tares ye root up also the wheat with them so Jesus was saying don't overreact we're not to overreact to every problem that arises in the church because by doing so we can jeopardize the spiritual health of the whole congregation Especially, especially for those younger Christians who have just come into the family of God. We can lose our spiritual health by overreacting. We must be careful in all areas of life. Yes, there's times in the church that leaders have to respond to some situation or issue in the church. But let us respond with love and compassion and open-mindedness for the good of all involved, because one day God will once and for all take care of the tares in the wheat. Let both grow together, the Bible says, until the harvest, and in the time of the harvest I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. We must also trust him to take care of our situations in his time and in our way. I'm going to close in giving you a, a, a thought. And I want you to think upon this. Uh, anybody that's listening to this video, if the rest of the message didn't make a lot of sense, which I hope it did, about overreacting, uh, I hope that, that you get those points. But if you didn't get anything else, I want you to hear this. 
2,000 years ago, there in Jerusalem, executions were taking place. The cruel Roman cross of crucifixion would be used to carry these out. On two crosses would be men being executed for crimes they had committed, but on one cross would be a man who never committed one single sin, one single wrong had he ever done. He was holy in every way because he was holy God. He had been beaten almost to death, body most certainly experiencing shock. Then they laid his beaten body on a cross and placed nails in his hands and his feet. And when that hammer fell, listen, and when that hammer fell and connected Jesus to that cross, I'm sure, folks, he felt like overreacting. I'm sure he did. For you see, he could have overreacted in that at his disposal there were legions of angels that could have taken him off the cross and instantly ushered him into glory where he would never hurt or suffer again. But he did not, thank God, he did not overreact because he looked down through time and he saw people like me and he saw someone like you in need of a payment for their sins and he knew he was the only way. And because of his unfailing, unchanging, and unconditional love for us this morning, folks, he suffered and bled and kept his composure and carried out his Father's will by dying in our place. Praise the name of the Lord forevermore. If anyone ever had an excuse for overreacting, Jesus did, but he did not. Friends, when we're hurt or we get our feelings hurt or someone says something or someone driving on the road maybe cuts you off, instead of overreacting, go back to the cross where our Savior did not overreact. He took it, didn't he? Because of his great love for us. That takes us back to what Jesus said. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Stop overreacting. When you go into the grocery store, just pick up one pack of those paper products and leave another one for your neighbor. Oh, if we'd have put that into practice several weeks ago, things would be different today. There are prices for overreacting. My little issues don't seem like much when I look at them in that perspective. As Jesus responds to us in love, church, let's respond to each other in love also. Let's stay calm and prayerfully look at a situ situation before we overreact. Certainly our Lord is our greatest example of not overreacting. God bless you today. Thank you for tuning in. Continue to pray for each other at the church. Those who have lost loved ones lately, those who are sick, uh, continue to pray for your pastor and his family as well. God bless you until we speak again.